Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this very exciting CREATE webinar. Particularly, we welcome uh, the principal of Marie Bashir Public School, Jacqueline Attard, and artist in residence, Howard Matthew, and some, some children as well are joining us this evening. Before we start, though, I'd like us all to acknowledge and pay respects to our First Nations Australians, our original storytellers, our original artists. And I'm joining from Darug country, the University of Sydney um, is on Gadigal land. You might like to acknowledge and pay respects to the country where you're zooming in from in the, in the chat line. Uh, I'm co-director of the CREATE Centre with Michael Anderson and CREATE is about creativity in research, engaging the arts, transforming education, health and well-being. I think the arts, creativity um, are so important for all of us, and I think that the recent pandemic has, has demonstrated to us just the important role that the arts and creativity need to play in all our lives and all our learning. And what we're going to hear about tonight really embodies that. I'm going to hand over to my co-director, Michael Anderson, to introduce everyone. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Robin, and welcome everyone. And I'd just like to reiterate, uh, Robin's acknowledgement of country and also uh, her words about how the arts are central to our lives and uh, might also be worth uh, mentioning that if you're not a member of CREATE, Thomas is going to drop a, um, uh, a link to join CREATE. So if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing, uh, you've come to the right place and joining CREATE, you'll know about all of the things that are going on. So please feel free to join us. It's free and we'd love to have you. But tonight, let's go on to, to the uh, topic at hand. I'm really uh, excited to be uh, welcoming Jacqueline Attard, who is the principal, as Robin's mentioned, of Marie Bashir Public School. Uh, since opening the school in 2014, while she was principal at Mortlake Public School, take that in, she was starting a school and running a school. Um, mm. She uh, has harnessed every opportunity to strengthen the creative arts programs. She's encouraged and enabled staff to attend professional learning on integrating the arts into teaching and learning programs. And she's inspired staff to trial new ways of working with students and co-teach with artists. And I think one of the things that I've seen, there's been, I've, as part of what I do, I come into contact with a lot of principals and some of the most uh, inspiring principals are those who, even though the pandemic has been a taken a huge toll on teachers and teaching and principals and all, all of the school community, they've still found ways to, to enrich the lives of their kids through the arts. And Jacqueline is one of those principals. So welcome, Jacqueline. And it's also my pleasure to introduce Howard Matthew. Now I've known Howard uh, for many years and worked with him on many projects, some of them uh, ludicrous, more ludicrous than others, but Howard is one of those amazing um, artists who is as is at is at home in a studio as he is in a classroom, uh, and I, that's a very rare talent in my experience. Uh, so I'm really pleased that Howard is is working with Marie Bashir because I since I've known him probably ten years now, Howard, it's always been about how we can do more engaging things with kids and um, uh, with the arts. And his work is truly groundbreaking uh, and has been for many, many years. So welcome, Jacqueline. Uh, welcome, Howard. And I'm um, going to throw over to Jacqueline now. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, Robin. Well, good evening. And I'm Jackie, Jackie Attard, and I'm the principal of Marie Bishy Public School. I too would like to show my respect and acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we're on this evening, the Wongal people of the Darug Nation. So joining us this evening, I have our resident artist, Howard Matthew, and our two students, Naomi, who is in year two, and I have Dylan, who is in year six. 
I also have our, a year two classroom teacher this evening, Rebecca Hahn, um, who, who will also speak to you briefly. Just to give you some context, um, Mariepshire Public School is situated in Strathfield. Um, we're in the southwest of Sydney. Our school has 90% uh, of our students are from a non-English speaking background. Um, it was quite significant for us um, to have an, an art program within the school. Um, and the art program has had a great impact um, on students um, and student learning. Um, it was really important that um, children's artistic flair, uh, for it, children's artistic flair, and the program has also instilled the value of art as a means of communication. The program has also inspired creativity in our students and also in our teachers. However, before I go on in more detail about our program, I'm going to ask both Naomi and Dylan to share their art experiences. So we might start with Naomi. Thank you, Naomi. Hi, I'm Naomi and I'm in year two. I have done art for three years. I like art because you get to make different things with everyday objects you can find around the house. During lockdown, we made funny faces with googly eyes on pot lids, light switches and doorknobs. It's fun to do, easy to follow and creates satisfying results. I was my imagination flow into creative ideas. That makes me happy because it is relaxing and fun. During home learning, Mr. Matthews did a video demonstration showing us how and what we will create and what materials we needed. Each step was explained with options along the way, just in case you didn't have something. I didn't need any help from my mum. I could do everything by myself. Technology helped make all our weekly art creations come to life like a moving story. I think art allows everyone to express themselves freely. Everyone has a different perspective. Even if we are doing the same art, they may look a bit different. It shows we all have creative, unique and interesting minds. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you very much. And now we have Dylan from Year 6. Thank you, Dylan. Hi, my name is Dylan Bacher and I have loved the art program. I have been in the art program since kindergarten. I enjoy art because it is re relaxing and is very satisfying when completed. Art allows me to channel a different part of my brain. People do not realize that by having the opportunity to study art can help you in traditional subjects like English and math. Art has helped me take risks and appreciate the challenges. An example of a challenge that I faced was when I did not know how to blend colors together. With a couple of attempts, I started to learn how to blend colors together. During homeschooling, I was very lucky that our art teacher prepared YouTube videos that gave us step-by-step -step instructions for our art assignments. This really helped me develop my skills during remote learning. I tried to complete all the assigned tasks to my best of my ability. The only challenge I had during home learning was that I couldn't complete some of the tasks due to limited materials at home. I think art is important because it expresses feelings, emotions, and feelings and emotions, and teaches us certain morals. Thank you very much, Dylan. Thank you both, Naomi and Dylan. As you heard this evening, um, art has had an impact on student learning. The specialised art program has equipped our students with skills and knowledge in the creative arts. It has also provided our students with a broad range of art experiences. Our journey really started um, in, back in 2014. Our newly appointed um, PNC valued the importance of the creative arts. Uh, we had a shared vision. 
we wanted to ensure that all our students reach their full potential in all areas of the curriculum, including the creative arts. Being a new school though, we had quite limited resources. So in partnership with the PNC, the school submitted a written application for a grant. Now the grant was named the Packer Family and Crown Resorts Foundation, Western Sydney Arts Initiative. So once submitting the application, um, we were interviewed by the board and fortunately we were successful. Um, so from 2015, um, the Packer family uh, and the Crown Resorts Foundation um, provided us with um, between $75,000 and $100,000 per annum, which contributed to running our art program at Marie Bashir Public School. So with this substantial amount of money, um, it has made a huge impact on resourcing our art program here at Marubishi Public School. We were able to purchase art resources um, and not only were we able to purchase you know, basic art resources like paint brushes um, and paints and what have you, but we were also able to purchase more technical art resources such as a kiln and we were able to purchase computers to maximize our capacity to teach the students digi art. Um, also, we were able to refurbish our art room. So the children had um, a, a special space um, for their art lesson. And the funds also allowed us, allowed our school to employ our resident artist, Howard Matthew, for three days a week. Um, the way we actually structured the art program um, was that every student participated um, in the art program. Um, the art program was conducted during the four terms in, in the year. Um, and during each term, each class um, received five 90 minute sessions. Um, so the resident artist, um, Howard, um, would team teach with, with each of the class teachers. Um, we wanted the approach where um, there was a teach the teacher approach. Um, so at the same time as not only teaching the students, um, Howard would upskill um, our class teachers um, in art. So um, there has been a number of benefits um, by doing, um, you know, by teaching art in this way. Um, it not only benefited the students, of course, um, it upskilled our teachers. Uh, but it also allowed us to integrate art um, within our programs. So um, our class teachers and Howard would cooperatively program um, for, for the term. Uh, but to give you a little bit more detail about um, our classroom programs, I would now like to introduce Rebecca Hahn, uh, who has been teaching at the school for the last five years and has been part of our, um, our art program. So thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Jackie, and hello, everyone. And thank you so much for allowing me to share my experiences with the art program at Murabishi Public School. So my name is Rebecca Hahn, and I'm a classroom teacher on year two here at Murabishi Public School. So firstly, it has been such a privilege to have this amazing art with Howard, our artist in residence. Um, so from the perspective of the classroom teacher, um, having a specialist artist work with us has been so wonderful for many reasons. Um, so firstly, the wealth of knowledge, the skills and expertise um, brought into the classroom has been so amazing. Um, I have learned so much about so many contemporary and diverse artists and different types of artworks from around the world and ways of creating art that I had never known and probably would not have afforded myself to learn about um, if I was programming for art myself. So Mr. Matthew um, Howard, he also has worked very closely with our stages and he uses the themes and content being explored in our programs um, to create the wonderful integrated program um, where the students can explore the ideas that we are learning in, in English, in history, in geography or PHPE, 
um, through a different medium and a different angle. And it just allows the students to consider different perspectives um, in a different way um, that is through art. And that has been so rewarding to see. Um, and of course, um, the impact on the students. All students, I think we know, they love art. And um, so very understandably, their engagement and interest is always really high during our art lessons. Um, but also during COVID, um, the art program has been particularly beneficial for all of our students' well-being as well. Um, I had students in my class and parents both share how how grateful they were of the art program during COVID. Um, and so many of the students, they were able to express their, their feelings and what they were thinking and things that they missed. And they also were able to have um, an escape at the time and be able to concentrate on other things um, during their art um, making that they did at home. And um, in my year, they created some cities made from um, household objects. So it'd be like a shake, uh, a salt shaker and um, the, the little windows and doors on the side. So that it looks like a building. And so then um, Howard created a cityscape made of all of these um, household objects. And it was created into a video where we could see um, uh, the, the images moving around, so it was animated. There was a uh, voiceover done by the students. Um, and at the end of the video, um, Howard also shared the art making process and how he created that online as well. And so the fact that this all happened during COVID was amazing in itself. Um, so we were just so uh, floored by the um, the talent that the students were able to uh, portray and also the fact that they were able to um, just forget about COVID for that bit of time that they were creating art as well. Um, and many of the parents also did express their gratitude in having, um, having art during um, our pandemic and remote learning. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I've particularly loved about um, our art program is really watching the students, um, including our students who have you know, artistic potential and talent, um, including those students who are self-proclaimed, can't drawers and um, a bit too perfectionistic to try. Um, and also the students who are you know, developing this facial awareness and their hand-eye coordination, all of our students grow in their understanding, grow in their skill, and also their love for art um, through this very invaluable program. Um, and so that has been very rewarding as a classroom teacher to see and to learn from. And so that is, that's all that I would like to share. So thank you. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Um, so as you can see um, or hear this evening, um, art has had a huge impact um, in the school. Um, it has impacted our, both our students um, and our teachers. Um, not only um, have we, you know, have, has there been a shared knowledge within our school community, um, but we've also shared um, the knowledge and understanding of art outside of our school community, um, as we also share our art facilities and resources with other schools, such as Lucas Gardens. Um, they attend here at Maribishi Public School uh, once a week for a 90 minute session. Um, and also Chalmers Road. Um, and with Chalmers Road, uh, a visiting artist attends their school for one, one day a week um, for one term in the year. Um, also, we have um, promoted our art lessons um, and, and our artwork um, on our school website um, for, you know, the community to, to view as well. Um, before I introduce our resident artists this evening, can I um, quickly thank uh, the CREATE Centre for providing us with this opportunity to share the impact our art program has had uh, within our school um, and which also extends um, beyond our school community. So now I would like to introduce our resident artist, Howard Matthew, 
um, who has been part of our program for the last two years, um, who, who will share with you the impact the ARP program has had on student and staff learning. Thank you, Howard. Thanks, Jackie. Um, I'd like to also, um, I'm coming to you from the art room, so I'm in a very different part of the school to my colleagues. I'd like to acknowledge the uh, Wongo people of the Darug Nation, uh, on whom our, um, our school is, our school site is, is built. So um, my background is as an artist was um, when I trained, I trained in an area at the time that was called, at that time in the late 90s, was called New Media or Multimedia. So I was, um, I did an um, interdisciplinary arts degree covering performance, installation, video. Um, video was, um, was still very, very clunky back in those days. It was still giant machines and nobody could edit on computers, but that really started my um, love off or my thinking about not only making art as a process, but how you can share it as a product. So video has been a constant thing that I've carried through my, my practice. And, and, and that will become quite clear later on when Thomas shares the, the video with us of how I drew upon that to, to do the homeschooling. So as an artist and educator, as, as Jackie outlined, um, my role is to really team teach with the teacher, with, with a teacher such as Rebecca, and then also um, deliver that, those classes in partnership, with, uh, in partnership with the teacher for the students. So really what I, I see my role as, as an artist educator is I see myself that I'm essentially an artist collaborating with other artists, with the teacher, with the students, and we're making a piece of work together. So there is an element of the work which is about upskilling the teacher, and there's also an element of extending students' knowledge and experiences. We're very, very fortunate here um, at Marie Bashir that um, it's very hard to, for you to see, you can see obviously my art room, but that my art room is unusually large for a primary school. And so, and really I see the space as also a material or, or as a resource to draw upon. So I can reconfigure the space I can do sort of embodied learning with um, younger years. I can have them moving around. Then we can pull the space back together again and we have seated space. So we can find lots and lots of different ways of working. And one of the ways I, I like to think of the way I do the program at Marie Bashir is that students can be components rather than work in chorus. So we don't all need to do 29 of the same things. We can think about approaching things very differently working on students' different strengths and different abilities. So students do make individual works, but we also make collective works as a class. And also so when we went online, we started, I started to explore how we could make collective works across whole stages. And that's what we'll see um, in the video. So when we went into home learning, what that enabled me to do was to draw upon, as I said, my skills skills in multimedia and video, that I could produce video content, but it also meant that I could start to think about a very different relationship with the students. That essentially talking to somebody one-on-one -on -one through a screen is a one-on-one -on -one relationship. It's not in a classroom context anymore. It's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And it also allows me to talk to families, which as a specialist teacher, unlike Rebecca, who is interfacing with families all the time, I'm not necessarily interfacing with families or parents at all. So I saw it as a really great opportunity to, to experiment with something different, with a very, very different approach to making work. What I also had to do with the home learning was think that I don't have this wonderful art room, I don't have the resources, I don't have a kiln to use, I don't have all the materials in the cupboard. I have to think about what the student has at home, pencil, paper, but also the fact that we have domestic objects and a range of objects that I wouldn't have in school. So how could I utilize and draw upon that? So what I did across lockdown was I created two videos every week, one for kindergarten to two, to year two, and one for year three to year six. And they all had a very, very similar structure, as you'll see in the, the first video that Thomas introduced in a second. I introduced a concept, then I put it out to the students, I demonstrate how that concept will work. And then I say, I want you to create something. And then very quickly, I realized that I felt that as an artist, I could collaborate more with them by, hey, why don't you share that back with me? And let's keep this sort of collaboration going, um, albeit in a digital space, 
we can't collaborate in this space, but let's keep that collaboration going. So Thomas is going to play for you a video now which shows you what the sort of the initial um, instigation for our activity was. I think this is a three or five minute video. All the videos that we have online follow a very, very similar structure with top and tail. So Thomas, I'll just pass over to you. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome to another art class. Now, we are looking at a picture here from a book called In the Night Kitchen by Maurice Sendak. And in this picture, you can see a little boy flying an aeroplane over the top of very high buildings. Now, if you look closely at the buildings, they are actually made from objects that you would find in your kitchen. Bottles, jars, I can see lots and lots of different objects and they've been set up to look like a city. Now when we see a picture of a city from the side like this, we call it a cityscape. And here you can see a cityscape of Sydney. Are there any buildings in this picture that you recognise? Today we are going to make our own cityscape using items that you will find around the home. Now, as always, you need to ask for permission before you start taking things. And this will be a good lesson where somebody can help you set up all your objects to look like a city. Here you can see I've created my own version of a city using objects that I've found in the kitchen. And I've tried to find different sizes and shapes of objects to make my city look interesting. Now, what's really important when you take a picture of your cityscape is that you are able to see the tops and the sides of all the buildings. And I've just outlined it here in red so you can see that you can see the, the top of my city buildings. If we look at this picture from the side, you can see how messy my study is, but you can also see that I've created a white background by putting sheets of white paper against an old suitcase. I also try to create a white background using an old white towel. Now, taking your pictures on a white background is really important because it helps you see the outline of your city and it also makes the picture nice and bright and clear. Now it's more important to create a smaller set of buildings than lots and lots of buildings and then you can't photograph them properly. You can't fit them all against your white background. So here are three different small versions, examples that I've taken that I will put together. So when you take your photograph and you send them to me, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to put them on my computer, as I'm demonstrating here, and I'm going to cut them all out, and then I'm going to combine them into one big picture. So every photograph that you send to me, I want to be able to cut it out and put them into one big picture, so that together we make one giant city. But this only works if you have a really, really good, sharp picture. It has to be nice and bright, and it has to be taken from the side. So I'm just going to do a quick recap here. Here is a checklist for you. Get your stuff together. Find all your objects. Remember to ask for permission. Maybe get somebody to help you build your city. Think about what buildings go in front. What buildings go behind? Can you stack things up? Look for different shapes and sizes and different colours. Find a white background. This is quite important because it helps me cut out your picture on the computer much more easily. And it also makes your picture nice and bright and sharp. And then the final thing is take a good clear picture. And before you upload it onto Seesaw or Google Classrooms, please check that it's a good, clear picture. 
Okay, look forward to seeing what you create this week and I will keep you updated with how our big city starts to come together. Have a lovely week, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so really, that was obviously that was the, the, the lesson pitched at the K-2 um, with the delivery and pace, obviously trying to be very, very clear. Um, what we really covered there was digital skills at their foundation level. And they are skills that you continually build upon. So take a good, clear picture. I mean, I, I say that and we think that it's all very straightforward, but I receive lots and lots of pictures all the time from adults that are not very clear. So it's really, really great to, that we start that up, that when we talk about digital arts, that we start off at that very, very foundational level. And it's also about composition and, and, um, and communicating your ideas online. What I was also able to do all the time as a city side to build up. So we did the um, we did all the buildings and then further to that, we then started creating mountains. And I just started to think about how we might do that at home. So I started getting students to get towels and rugs and think about creating buildings in, in a very, very simple, immediate way. So it kind of made me start to think about that, that home play that you have, like where you start to create like hobby, hobby houses and things like that, where you, you're literally using the materials around you and reimagining what they could be. As we got further along and in discussion with the teachers, so what was really great about this was I was able to share um, little episodes with students as to where the city was developed. And teachers could also feed back and share through Google Classrooms and Seesaw with me ideas as well. So one of our teachers an idea when I said I'd like to put it together ultimately, not just as a picture, but also as a video. And then I said, well, yeah, that would be great if the video had some kind of narration or soundscape. But I wasn't sure that that would be possible because of course the students were still working at home and I'm on site or I'm at home. And we were actually managed to really work. This was where working in partnership with the parents was really, really key. We got the parents to voice record students and they would send the teachers, the teachers would forward them onto me. And then I would start to put together all the little sonic components to create this kind of, I guess, overall sort of immersive experience. So that just gives you a sort of a sense of where we started from. The next video that Thomas is going to show you is the actual final finished process. Now there was a, a video of these for each, each year group. So I had a kindergarten, a year one, a year two. I think we're going to watch the year two one. So bearing in mind, this is a series, this video is a series of probably about three or 400 different images that have been assembled over time. So there's lots and lots of layering going on in this work. Okay, thank you, Thomas. is full of sound and colour. You can hear the cars and trains. Some animals live in trees. Some animals live in the bush. Some animals swim 
in the river. At night, we go to sleep. This whole of Year 2 artwork was created during lockdown Term 3 2021. Each week, students were set a task to make and photograph. These photographs were emailed to me and I combined them to make this amazing city of domestic objects. In addition to this film, the final artwork will be printed out as a poster to proudly hang in the school art room. Well done everyone, Mr Matthew. Thank you so much, Jackie, um, Rebecca, Naomi, Dylan, and Howard. That's been a fantastic presentation. And it was so wonderful to have representatives from different parts of the school community to share their perspectives. And I, I'm just blown away by, first of all, the vision, Jackie, that you had in terms of putting arts at the center as you were creating the community at Marie Bashir, but also the way that you um, have been able to access funding so that you could have the resources and of course an artist in residence to work with the teachers. And I love the concept of the, um, of the collaborative process and that everyone is an artist because Often we, we kind of get a feeling at some point in our education that only some people are artists, but that this process has enabled everyone to be an artist and to be upskilled. So it's, it's just a fantastic process and experience. And congratulations to all of you. Now, I'm sure that there are questions from, from um, some of our audience. So, um, perhaps you'd like to put a question in the chat or uh, if, you, if you'd like to ask a question. Um, I think we're, we've got some time. Thomas, you might have a question. I did have a question. How did you know? Um, my question was, I was curious about the software that you were using to create um, those artworks. You may have mentioned this already, but it... Um, I'm just curious to know what, what you're using and, and um, how it works. Yeah, so I, I actually didn't mention the software, but um, I use Photoshop. I've, I've worked with Photoshop since it was in its first generation. Um, so that was, a, that, was a, that was a skill with the new media that I picked up at university. And I also use Final Cut Pro. So, um, and I have, because of my my work as a freelance artist to have that facility at home as well as at school so often as you could see my messy studio if you literally turned around the computer would be on the other on the other wall and have you been and is work like this is that part of your practice artistic practice otherwise or is this something that you developed for the um for the students Look, my, my artistic practice over the last 10 years, I would say, has evolved into being into being collaborative. So um, I, I don't really work, I don't really make individual work anymore. I got to a place where I actually found working with people to be more rewarding than working on my own. So it, it was carrying skills across really from doing my own practice to, um, yes, to working with other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And has a question would you like to unmute and ask your question oh sure uh hey howard i love the video love love loved it i'm just curious how long did it take you to put that video together and is it something that going forward the senior students can learn and do themselves such as you know the year fives or year six yeah okay so that looked the putting that together i got quicker so that was the first one i put together and I learned a lot from doing that process just because it was the logistics of managing so many files because I had every week I would be downloading the work of 
a hundred files, a hundred different students sending me stuff. And then I have to sift through all that. And of course, some I have to request another picture to come from them or, you know, I had to catalog that. So there was, there was a lot of cataloging and then actually putting the video together, I say was a good day's work. Um, it's very hard for me to quantify because what I, as an artist, I've never really worked nine to five. So, you know, I get a burst and, and also being in lockdown, what would happen is I would get the files and I would start go, okay, it's fresh. I'll do a few hours now and then I'll make dinner. And then I might do a few hours later. I might do, I've got a, a, a spare Saturday morning. I'll do a little bit of work. So I've always been the kind of person that doesn't work to a regular pattern. In answer to the other part of the question, is that something that students can do? Yes, of course. Um, I, I guess the, the thing is with an editing process is it's very, it, it requires very small groups or one-on-one -on -one to you with a device. But what you'll notice that, and, and what I do is that all, all my work is very, very, in a way it's very, very lo-fi. It's a piece of students' artwork that I essentially move across. It's it's one it's basically one skill set which is over ten seconds. This little drawing moves from here to here, and once you understand that concept, it's actually not it's it's very very immediate compared to how complex the digital world has become. It reminded me of those um, little uh, tiny sketches between the larger sketches in a Monty Python episode that Terry Gillum used to do, sort of manipulating the cartoons um, for gags. There was a, far fewer um, feet and um, classical paintings. But I'm curious to know, um, sort of leading on from that, Howard and Jackie, whether you've noticed the students coming up with, um, mm. I guess, new projects or new ways or, or the next steps when it comes to this sort of work? Are they sort of conceiving of different ways that they can practice or engage in the artistic practice? Yes, um, I, I think the art program allows the children to take risks um, and try new things. So um, how it allows that within, within the classroom context. And, and I suppose within like the home context when um, the lessons were via Zoom, um, it allowed, it gave the children the opportunity to experiment, um, to take risks, um, and then, you know, to evaluate what they've done and to improve on that. Um, and I, I've seen this not only, you know, in, this, in the children's work, but also um, with the teachers as well, because at the moment they're, um, they're in the middle of completing a class project, a class art project, and, um, you know, so the class teacher in cooperation with Howard um, and, the, and the students um, have come up with a class concept um, to create. Um, and I, I suppose it's ever evolving um, and they're always evaluating, you know, at different stages of, you know, the development of, of their art piece, um, modified, modifying it, um, recreating, adding, um, so I suppose the art program allows for that and it's okay to take risks, um, make changes along the way. Uh, so yes, um, yeah, I've noticed um, a huge just improvement in the skills, knowledge and even the children's understanding um, of the process of creating a, you know, artwork mm -hmm. um, and, and also in teachers because um, we're all still learning too. I think just to add to that, Jackie, as well, I, I actually just thought about when, whilst I was in home learning, what students also started to share with me was some of the older students, through having a device or a mobile phone, they would actually time lapse their, their making of the artwork as well. So they would start to try and replicate some of the processes that I was doing them, where if it was a longer drawing that would take a long time, I would say, hey, you don't need to do this today. You've got all week. Don't feed, don't feed you need to finish the day and some of them would do time lapse of them drawing and then also what what some students are doing as well was they started to look at what the um, the conventions of sharing media were so i would get some students sending me stuff in with and they were copyright they were copywriting it they were saying that this is copyrighted to me my sister is an occasional helper and they were looking at what those conventions were so that was very that was really nice to see actually that that, and that was all happening remotely that wasn't with any sort of um, me asking them to do that. So it was interesting. 
Yeah. That's fantastic. And and um, you said that the parents too have also commented, which is exciting as well. Do you think the parents were learning as well at home? Yes. Yeah. I think yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, they were yeah very interested, and they were also part of the learning yeah process too. Yeah, just assisting with their children. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was a really nice experience, um, and, and nice that the community. Um, got involved as well which is lovely yes yeah. a very positive story and an outcome from COVID I think yes um, there's a couple of lovely comments that I don't know if you've had a chance to see Kathy Rushton would you like to to make your comment and Jackie Manuel you might like to follow I just said congratulations to you all at Marie Bashir that was absolutely fantastic I can see some parents' names are on there tonight as well, which is lovely. Mm. Jen and Anne, nice to see you again. And Rebecca, you've got wonderful teachers there, Jackie. And of course, like Robin said, you've got the vision. And mm. Howard, what brilliant ideas. <laughs> and the skill to put them in. <laughs> yeah, but it's, the kids must have been so proud. That's just beautiful. And I can't help but say it, literacy me. But the two students oh, yeah. spoke. Yes. Mamma mia, they were sensational. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was just too good. So, yeah, congratulations, all of you. It's, uh, it's heartwarming, especially after these couple of rotten years. Just beautiful work, heartwarming. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so and, and I um, absolutely um, reiterate what Kath has said. It was just so inspiring and to to see these young students engaging in such incredibly powerful ways and it will have a lifetime mm -hmm. impact. Um, if any of us can remember back uh, as far as our uh, year two, <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if we would have had an experience like that, we would remember it because it's those kinds of um, embodied, creative, artistic experiences that stay with you forever. Mm. And that sense of agency that, that I, um, I, I, from the young children speaking, it was just fabulous. And we need so much more of that. And what a powerful program you've put together. Congratulations. It really is so, in, so inspiring to see this happening um, you know, in, in, in such a, a wonderfully supportive setting and and yeah, we've had a horrible couple of years, but I, I'm pretty confident that, that your students will remember this experience uh, for the rest of their lives. So congratulations. I take my hat off to you, I really do. Thank you. Thank you. I think we all do. And, and I, I actually think, Thomas, this is the first for uh, a CREATE webinar where we've had you know, a whole school community sharing such an inspiring and exciting project um, and process. And I think if anyone needed a, a, a rationale for why the arts should be at the centre of our learning, we have it in what Marie Bashir has been doing. So um, I hope that everyone here will um, share the recording when it's available, because I think we need to, to share this story far and wide. It, it's a wonderful example of how important the transformative um, role of the arts can be um, and how much can happen when everyone in the school community works together in that collaborative way. So um, can't thank you enough for sharing this work. Thank you, Robin, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, we've enjoyed sh sharing our journey and it has been a very exciting journey um, yeah, with, with the class teachers, our resident artists, uh, the students um, and our entire school community. I can't begin to tell you how supportive um, our PNC have been over the, the past seven years. Um, so thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jacqueline and Howard and all the others and, and please um, thank those uh, year two students. They're so yes. articulate and yes. <laughs> so oh, full of vibrancy and passion. Yes, yes. Thank you, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. 
And please, if you're not yet a member of CREATE, um, please consider um, joining us and um, sharing all of the wonderful creative and artful work that is so important for who we are as human beings and for our ongoing learning in a, in a world that is getting increasing, increasingly complex. Good night, everyone.